Okay, we're going to kind of demonstrate how to make a slab container. Your first slab practice container will have a base and four sides, no lid is necessary. <clears throat> first thing you want to do is wedge your clay, and then you're going to kind of like not necessarily slam the clay, but onto the table or onto these boards, but kind of like let it flop down at an angle and let the weight of the clay just kind of stretch out the shape of the clay to somewhat of a slab to start with. So it's not a round ball. And that slab there is a pretty good start with. We'll use these boards here to gauge the thickness of our clay. Remember we want to look for a half inch thick clay so we use double wide one inch, one eighth inch boards around a quarter inch or so. We'll lay those on top of each other side by side. And um, I'm going to put the clay right in the middle and then the rolling pin will roll out your slab here. Roll it for a little bit and then flip it. <clears throat> it's like cooking a hamburger on the grill. You got to flip it. Let a little bit of air get into the underneath the uh, slab so when you roll it it stretches out easier. One more flip here, and another roll, and there we have a nice even thickness slab using a rolling pin. Make sure you clean your rolling pin. You get anything on the rolling pin, like a dried piece of clay, and then you end up with a blob or texture mark in your clay. So um, put that. Get the rolling pin clean. Unfortunately, your classmates sometimes don't clean clean up after themselves, just like at home. So, cutting some slabs out of this, we'll make a base and four sides. And uh, make your base a little bit bigger than your sides. So, I'm gonna. Just kind of cut that in half. I'm not measuring this. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. You may want to use a template to cut out your shapes. But let's see. Here is my side wall. And I'm going to make my base about half and an inch. One half inch bigger on all four sides. Okay. I'm going to make four more of these. Actually, I'm going to make three more so I get a total of four. So there's my four side walls. And they will join <coughs> just like this. Okay, so I can check them to see if they fit right. At this point, that doesn't look too bad. We'll stay with that. Now I'm going to set these aside for one night and let them get leather hard. And after they get to leather hardness, then I can go ahead and start to score it. And it's easier to score with a fork here. Scoring all the surfaces that are going to join. This side here. I'm going to have a seam right here. And then I'm going to have a seam right here. So I could just take this and dip that right in my slip. And join that on there. Again, this probably the best way to do this is wait for this to dry overnight. Just for the purposes of getting this video done today, I'd like to just show you how this works without letting it get leather hard. If you try to build it when it's soft like this, 
chances are your slab container will look sloppy. So let your pieces of your slab get leather hard. Okay, so we got this one edge here, we got a joining edge. We also got one right there. So we got a little slip on that there too. See if we lift it up here, you could see those seams there. The slip getting squished through the seams. Those are good seams right there. And as far as smoothing the seams out, you want to use one of these little tools here. This is a wood tool. Works really well for smoothing your seams together. Again, this will be best to do when the clay is leather hard. You can kind of see I just put a dent in it right there. So I'm going to push that back out. Okay? So you just keep building all the way around this, offsetting your seams so that the construction looks something like this. Okay? Once it dries, we'll drop this one and grade it, seeing how well it held together as from an 18 inch drop. Okay, unlike your last coil pot, I want you to smooth out the seams on this one. Okay, smoothing out the seams works by just using your finger or a small tool to move across the seams of the clay. Not adding water, you add too much water to it and it's just going to kind of dissolve your clay. So just use your fingers to smooth it so that on the outside we have a hard time telling where your seams are, where it's smoothed together. And this should all be done while the clay is somewhat leather hard so that you can smooth the clay particles together. Once the clay dries, there's not much you can do with it. So work with the clay while it's still leather hard to smooth your seams and try for some real nice neatness on this one, even though we're going to destroy it. And then again on the bottom, make sure you write your initials and the date. That way we'll know when it's dry. We wait for things to dry about a week before we fire them.